And I would have to say that um, the arguments for closing down Vermont Yankee are compelling. And if Governor Doobie thinks that he can get it um, past the legislature, I think he's wrong. And I also think that whatever else happens, energy is going to take it to court. Because Vermont is the only state that can close one down on its own. The other states all have to go through the Public Service Commission and the other things that are in, in effect in the pocket of the nuclear power industry, which is a subdivision of the nuclear weapons industry. So as strongly as I feel about closing down Vermont Yankee, I think the arguments there are not the kind of thing that needs to affect who you vote for for governor. I think you should vote for the person you want to be governor, or if you're willing to make a vote for someone who probably won't be governor, to give serious consideration to the second republic, because it would be a step toward real autonomy for Vermont. If we had instant runoff voting, uh, this problem would be solved. Because, uh, for instance, you could vote for, uh, for Dennis Steele as your first choice. But if he didn't win, then your second choice could be uh, the Democrat. And uh, if, uh, if Dennis came in third on the first count, your vote would automatically go over to the Democrat. And that would prevent uh, Brian Doobie from winning. Don't you think we should have instant runoff voting? No, it seems to me that uh, instant vote off running um, has given uh, Burlington the mayor, uh, who I voted for, by the way, but he didn't win either of those races. He got fewer votes. In fact, I think one of me got fewer votes than two other candidates. And it was the third count when he won. So again, I voted for him, and I think he's a fine mayor and uh, you know, wonderful politician, and I like his policies. But I also think that the person who gets the most votes, the man or woman who gets the most votes, should win the election. Yeah, we disagree on that. Yeah. I think uh, mm -hmm. it's a problem of uh, understanding, really, the complexities of instant runoff voting. Because uh, uh, nobody would really get the most votes if everybody voted for their first choice, since everybody would choose themselves. I would choose myself for governor. You would choose yourself for governor. No, I wouldn't choose myself for governor. You wouldn't? <laughs> no. no, I'm not qualified to be governor. <laughs> um, well, we could have a system such as they have in Europe, where the party that gets 13% of the votes gets 13% of the seats in the legislature. Now, that wouldn't work for the individual offices, but it would work very well for the state, the lower house and the upper house. Yeah, I like that system, too. I lived in Sweden for a while, mm -hmm. and they have the proportional representation system. Um, and if you have a parliamentary uh, uh, government, uh, instead of having a, a governor, you could have a prime minister of the state, and uh, the party could, uh, the majority party could choose the, uh, the prime minister. So uh, proportional representation would work for the whole, the whole government. Um, it's unfortunate that we don't have one of those systems here where it would be much more democratic. It's too bad, and some of it is because of the very beneficial thing that we started earlier. That is, we had our revolution in 1776 and had won it by 1783 and devised our basic system by 1789 with the Constitution and the, uh, and the Bill of Rights. But we were still used to a central governor and government with a king and so we wanted our president to have those kinds of executive powers. Now, the democratic revolution that went on through the 19th and early 20th century began to realize that something else had to be done for the minorities, and that a significant minority with 10 or 11 percent ought to have 10 or 11 percent of the influence. 10 or 11 percent of the seats. And the additional advantage to this is the way you can adjust in between the major elections, which are, you know, four years for president and most governors and six years for the Senate. We don't have any way to make an adjustment to that, really, in between. We can get stuck with a George W. Bush or, or, or anyone else uh, with no way to get them out of office. Um, no president has ever been successfully impeached. The impeachment has brought it been brought only a couple of times. 
And so in a parliamentary system, if the midterm election or any special election that they might call has a big shift, you wind up with a new prime minister, and not even necessarily from the same party. Mm -hmm. So it allows you more flexibility, and it would be very nice to have that flexibility. But that's not on offer at the moment. So at the moment, we have to choose among the candidates who are actually running. And that would be Brian Doobie, um, the Democrat, apparently uh, Peter Shumlin, or possibly Doug Lassine. We'll know about that in a couple of weeks. And they're after to run a very close race. But there's another important race. Uh, Patrick Leahy is up for re-election to the uh, uh, U.S. Senate. Um, what do you think about that, uh, that race? Uh, well, do you mean, do I think he'll win? Uh, well, are you voting for him? Well, it depends on who's running against him. I will vote for the peace candidate in any election. So if there's a peace candidate running against him, I will vote for the peace candidate for um, all of the service that he's provided for Vermont and for all of the power of his seniority and the chairmanship, the you know council on you know the uh, excuse me foreign relations Senate Foreign Relations Committee. I believe he's the chair. Um, I think stopping the war in Afghanistan and combating the lie that Iraq is a victory when they don't have effective electricity. A lot of them don't have clean water. And six months after their election, the Shia and the Sunnis are killing one another over forming a government. And we haven't even factored the Kurds into that. Iraq is right now a failed state. We just don't want to admit that since the failure is because we went in there, not once but twice, once when Saddam Hussein's government invaded Kuwait, which they shouldn't have done. But our ambassador, what was her name? April last Yeah, I don't remember. Like that. Well, she suggested that we might not take it amiss. I mean, after all, we had backed his government in the war against Iran because we were miffed about the capture of our diplomats. Uh, miffed is the wrong word. They, they shouldn't have done that. On the other hand, Kermit Roosevelt shouldn't have thrown a lot of money around and put the Shah back in power for 20 years with one of the most murderous secret police, the Savak, right up there with the NKVD or the KGB. So, I mean, we're, we're not, we're not, we've been messing around with other countries for years because we had the money and the power to do so. But that ought to stop. Now, I'm not saying that Senator Leahy should have stopped it. I'm saying that if there's a candidate in the race who is closer to the opinion that the United States should start to mind its own business and fix its own economy and rebuild our industrial base and bring us better health care, that's the candidate that I'll vote for, in spite of my admiration for Senator Leahy. We know Peter Diamondstone is running uh, on the Socialist Party ticket against uh, Patrick Leahy. Uh, what do you think of Peter Diamondstone? I don't know what his current campaign is, but I'll check it out. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And uh, people at home that want to know more about Peter uh, can watch uh, the uh, interview that I uh, do with him. Uh, he, I believe uh, he, he will uh, represent uh, a peaceful solution to, uh, to the wars.